Hello everyone uh, and welcome back to another a very exciting chess game from the history of chess. I have one more very beautiful chess game to show you by Bobby Fischer. So in this chess game Fischer had the black pieces and this time his opponent, one of his strongest opponents in his chess career, Victor the Terrible Korshnoi, one of the strongest chess players ever who never became the world chess champion. So this was from the Hersek Novi Blitz Chess Tournament from 1970 and one of the most legendary Blitz Chess Tournaments in the history as there was some of the most legendary chess players competing in this tournament eh, such as Samuel Reshevsky, Bobby Fischer, Mikhail Tal, Tigran Petrosian, Viktor Korchnoi, Simislov, Bronstein, Borislav Ilkov, I mean these were some of the strongest chess players at the time and especially uh, Tigran Petrosian and Mikhail Tal is known uh, for being an extremely gifted strong blitz chess players but Bobby Fischer without any problems he has easily managed to win this very strong blitz chess tournament he played I think 22 or 23 games and he won almost all of them but he only lost one chess game and that was against Viktor Korshnoi so they played two games with Korshnoi and this was basically the revenge game of Bobby Fischer against Korshnoi from the Hersek Novi Blitz Chess Tournament in 1970. And Hersek Novi, uh, by the way, is a town uh, in the country Montenegro. Okay, only for the records. And in this chess game we have Bobby Fischer's notes and uh, I will try to... Uh, read some of the Bobby Fischer's quotes and notes about this chess game. So Bobby Fischer had the black pieces and Korshnoi starts the game with d4, knight to f6 and we basically have the king's Indian defense and then bishop to e2, castling, knight to f3, e5 and castling, d5, pushing the pawn, knight to e7 so white is getting some space in the center, knight to d2 and then Fischer pushed the pawn and we have a closed position. So we have a3, knight goes back and then pushing the pawn. So basically Korshnoi wants to expand in the queen side. And Fischer played a prophylactic move b6 because if capturing the pawn, capturing back with the d pawn is not looking very good. Also giving white a passed pawn. So rook over and then Fischer said uh, after making all the necessary precautions, he said it is time to attack on the king side. So he says now he is ready to attack and he pushed the f pawn f5 exclamation point so pushing the pawn and then f3 and Bobby Fischer pushed the pawn and he is getting some space uh, in the king side and uh, actually in this position Bobby Fischer said instead of playing f3 uh, he said uh, sorry f3 and then pushing the pawn and then a4 uh, so actually we have Bobby Fischer's notes and uh, Bobby Fischer said that he said maybe knight to b3 should have been considered he, he liked that move better instead of f3 uh, okay anyway so I don't know why he said that <laughs> to be honest with you so pushing the pawn and then a4 g5 so basically Bobby Fischer is expanding in the king side a5 and then lifting the rook up and Bobby Fischer is going to swing his rook and then targeting the king and attacking the king so pawn takes and then pawn takes knight to b3 but then rook to g6 as planned and Fischer wants to push the pawn you can see that the bishop is also aiming and we can say that okay Korshnoi is expanding from the queen side which looks a little bit intimidating but Bobby Fischer's attack looks even more intimidating as he is directly attacking to the throat to the king so we have bishop to d6 and then knight uh, knight to f6 so uh, king escapes and then simply g4 and Bobby Fischer can also push the g-pawn to g3 and that's a possibility and if pushing the pawn so you can see that rook over and sacrificing the bishop on h3 is also possible so capturing and then 
Fisher plate, knight takes, on g4. And we have rook to f3, a fisher seid in this position. Bishop to f3 would be a more tenacious defense. So he didn't like rook to f3 in his notes. I'm not reading all of the notes of Bobby Fisher, by the way. He has so many notes. That's why I get confused a little bit. Uh, but Bobby Fisher write a lot of notes about almost every move. So we have rook over and targeting the king and obvious threat is rook takes so or maybe knight takes so pushing the pawn but the pawn is pinned so Bobby Fischer's idea was actually quite brilliant. Fischer played knight to g6 so he basically wants to place his knight on g5 and he is going to add one more important attacking asset into the king side and it is going to be very difficult to deal with this in a blitz chess game especially. So we know that Bobby Fischer was making his moves like instantly, like sh -sh 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 -sh, very fast. And this was a five minutes blitz chess game. All of the chess players in this tournament had five minutes. Don't forget that this was a blitz game and five minutes with no increment. So uh, according to many resources, we know that Bobby Fischer was making his moves so instantly, so quickly and rapidly. He was only spending he only spent two minutes at most uh, in his blitz chess games when he had five minutes so he was extremely fast and moving uh, quite rapidly so okay so in a five minutes blitz chess game this was bobby fisher's idea knight to g6 knight to h8 knight to f7 and then finally knight to g5 so this is what happened now uh, threatening to take the knight Fisher didn't want to lose the knight and then bishop to e1 and there it is knight to h8 so this attacking maneuver is decisive that's what Bobby Fisher said and Bobby Fisher add two exclamation points to this move so again knight is going to hop in to uh, to g5 so we have rook over and knight to f7 bishop to f3 and then simply well Bobby Fisher said uh, h4 should have been considered in this position it looks very ugly but this move would be a more uh, resisting defense actually so you can see that it looks extremely ugly as you can see but at the same time strangely uh, it is actually defending on g5 but this didn't happen and maybe bobby fisher was right so we have knight to g5 finally bobby fisher's knight is getting in to g5 so let's take it back actually it's interesting uh, uh, Bobby Fischer, as you can see, moved his knight to g6. That was his first move. And finally, you can see that look at this knight. I mean, it became a quite powerful attacking piece. Knight to g5. And, okay, uh, obviously Bobby Fischer is planning to sacrifice a piece and bless opening the center, uh, opening the center of the king. And then, attacking his opponent relentlessly so this was Bobby Fischer's idea his brutal attacking plan to opening the king so queen to e2 and then rook to g6 lining the rook with the king so the pawn is pinned escaping but Bobby Fischer is attacking at the right moment knight takes on h3 that's a knight sacrifice g takes on h3 and then boom bishop takes on h3 so Bobby Fischer is getting his revenge and king moves and this is interesting because Bobby Fischer in his notes he said that he was almost going to capture on e4 and he realized at the final second that this move would be a blunder at the last second Bobby Fischer realized that because if knight takes I mean he was maybe expecting a bishop takes don't forget this was a blitz chess game so he had to think very quickly Bishop takes or knight takes that's what he saw somehow it was like seeing it was like hallucinating a little bit and then his queen is going to get in and the king has nowhere to run as you can see but at the final moment Fisher was hallucinating at that moment he realized that queen takes on e4 was winning for white because if checking the king with the queen you can see that the king is escaping and against Viktor Korshny, you don't want to lose your piece for nothing. So this is why Bobby Fischer 
in his notes he mentioned that instead of playing that move he played a much more stronger move and he played knight to g4 and this was the correct move a uh, black uh, sorry victor Korchnoi, who is playing with the white pieces didn't want to line his king to the rook so he played bishop takes on g4 and then bishop takes on g4 what else uh, after bishop takes i mean after checking the king with the knight he had to capture but then bishop takes on g4 and in this position victor Korchnoi resigned actually his king is getting checkmated and there is no defense interesting so bobby fisher simply destroyed his strong rival in 30 moves an amazing chess game absolutely amazing and this is one of my favorite bobby fisher chess games actually in the database so let me show you the possible continuation let's see why victor Korshnoi resigned so this is attacking the queen and you can see that this g and h pile is open the queen is going to get in and this is a very difficult position not difficult actually it is an impossible position to defend so let me show you the possible continuation if defending the queen like this then we have check and there is nowhere to run if queen to g2 check checkmate and if bishop to g3 check checkmate it doesn't make any sense of course uh, bishop to g3 doesn't make any sense it's just game over and mm, what else uh, bishop takes bishop takes and they say if queen uh, to b2 but this is also getting checkmated like this queen to h4 we have king to f1 let's say and then checking the king only move and then bishop to d1 and how to defend rook to g2 or queen to g2 checkmate there is no defense the king is stuck and if capturing the bishop then we have checkmate like this incredible stuff uh, so so absolutely there is no defense basically white is getting checkmated in this position bishop takes on g4 and korchnoi resigned so uh, nothing works actually queen to h4 uh, king to f1 queen to h1 king to f2 uh, and then bishop to d1 there is nothing anyway so these are some of the possible continuations uh, this is how bobby fisher defeated his strong rival so and it was quite a revenge by bobby fisher so thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you next time take care stay safe and bye bye